It is the beginning of the month and therefore we are looking at another traditional path in the path series and this month we're going to look at the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Welcome to my channel. You are entering the world of magic and mysticism with your host Lee W. Johnson. Keep the lights on and help improve the channel by becoming a supporter for just $2.99 per month. Hit the join button. Alright, so last month we did uh, Thelema, or Thelema, um, which kind of had its roots in uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which is commonly known as the Golden Dawn. This is one of the most influential and probably fascinating esoteric societies of the late 19th and early early 20th centuries. Uh, it was founded in 1888 in London. It played a pivotal role in the development of Western occultism and influencing various mystical and magical traditions that followed. Uh, the order is renowned for its complex rituals, uh, symbolic teachings, and an eclectic blend of mystical traditions ranging from Hermeticism to Kabbalah and alchemy. The Golden Dawn was established by three British Freemasons. Uh, those were William Wynne Westcott, Samuel Lydell McGregor Mathers, and William Robert Woodman. Westcott, a coroner by profession and a dedicated student of the occult, allegedly discovered a manuscript written in cipher, which he claimed contained the foundational rituals of the order. This manuscript, known as the Cipher Manuscripts, is said to have been the basis of the Golden Dawn's teachings. With the help of Mathers and Woodman, Westcott decoded and elaborated these rituals, leading to the creation of the order itself. Uh, William w Wynne Westcott, he is the one who claimed to have discovered the cipher manuscripts in the early 1880s. According to his account, the manuscripts were written in a complex cipher and contained outlines for various magical rituals and teachings. The origin of these manuscripts is shrouded in mystery. Some suggest that they were passed down through secret es esoteric societies, uh, while others speculate that they were a modern creation designed to lend an aura of antiquity and legitimacy to the Golden Dawn. The manuscripts themselves are composed of 60 folios written in a cipher that resembles a variant of the Trithemius cipher. Uh, this is a Renaissance um, cryptographic system. Once decoded, the manuscripts revealed detailed instructions for the construction of a magical order, including uh, rituals of initiation. These were detailed descriptions of the initiation ceremonies for different grades within the Golden Dawn. These rituals were rich in symbolism and aimed at transforming the initiate's spiritual state. Um, also included magical knowledge and practices, outlines of magical practices, including the use of elemental energies, planetary influences, and various forms of divination. The manuscripts included instructions for creating magical tools and talismans. And Kabbalistic and Hermetic teachings, um, integrating Kabbalistic concepts with Hermetic philosophy. The manuscripts provided a framework for understanding the Tree of Life and its correspondences. The discovery of the cipher manuscripts was pivotal in the formation of the Golden Dawn, as we've said. Uh, Westcott, along with Samuel Lydell McGregor Mathers and William Robert Woodman, used the decoded content as a basis for the order's rituals and teachings. Mathers, in particular, expanded and elaborated upon the material, infusing it with his own extensive knowledge of the occult. The rituals outlined in the cipher manuscripts were adapted to create a structured system of grades, each representing different levels of spiritual and magical attainment. The progression through these grades was designed to lead the initiate from basic knowledge of the occult to advanced magical practices and spiritual enlightenment. 
The cipher manuscripts have been the subject of much debate and speculation. Some of the key controversies and theories include um, its authenticity and origins. Um, there is uh, ongoing debate about whether these cipher manuscripts are genuinely ancient uh, documents or a pure modern fabrication. Uh, critics argue that the content and language suggest a more recent origin, possibly created by Westcott or his associates to establish the Golden Dawn's credibility. Um, there's also purpose and intent of the manuscripts that have come into question. Um, some scholars believe the manuscripts were deliberately created as a practical guide for founding a magical order, rather than being a set of ancient texts. The, uh, you know, this view posits that the manuscripts were a tool to attract and organize like-minded individuals into a cohesive group. Um, and also influences and sources have come into question. Uh, researchers have identified similarities between the cipher manuscripts and earlier esoteric texts, such as the works of Heinrich Cornelius, Cornelius Agrippa, uh, John Dee and Eliphas Levy. Uh, this suggests that the manuscripts may have been influenced by or compiled from these particular sources. But uh, despite the controversies surrounding their origins, the cipher manuscripts have had a profound impact on the development of the Golden Dawn and Western esotericism as a whole. The rituals and teachings derived from the manuscripts formed the backbone of the Golden Dawn system, which, is, which in turn uh, influenced many subsequent occult traditions, as we know. The manuscripts have also inspired a broader interest in cryptography and the decoding of esoteric texts. The process of decoding the cipher manuscripts highlighted the importance of cryptographic skills in the study of esoteric literature, uh, reinforcing the connection between occultism and the art of hidden writing. So, the Golden Dawn was structured into three main orders, each representing different levels of attainment and knowledge. So the first order, uh, this focused on personal development, basic magical knowledge, and the preparation of higher studies. Members were introduced to the elements, astrology, and the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. And then the second order, also known as the Rosé Rubier et Aurier Crucis, or the Order of the Red Rose and the Golden Cross. Uh, this order dealt with deeper magical practices and inner alchemy. Members who were called adepts uh, practiced advanced rituals and were introduced to Enochian magic. And then the third order, the most secretive and elite level, comprising the leaders who were believed to be in contact with the secret chiefs. Uh, spiritual beings who guided the order itself. It is said in the book by uh, Chicks, Chick Cicero, um, Self-Initiation into the Golden Dawn Tradition. Uh, let me just get the quote here. The third order consists of the grades from Magister Templi to Ipsissimus. These grades are not attained by living initiates, which makes things quite interesting, I think. The teachings of the Golden Dawn were an amalgamation of various esoteric traditions. The members studied the Kabbalah, uh, tarot, astrology, geo geomancy, um, and alchemy, uh, among many, many other disciplines. Rituals were highly symbolic, often involving elaborate ceremonies aimed at in invoking spiritual entities, attaining higher states of consciousness, and mastering the elements themselves. Um, the concept of the secret chiefs is a cornerstone of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn's mythology and structure. These fascinating figures are believed to be highly advanced spiritual beings or exalted adepts who oversee the operations of esoteric orders and guide their members towards spiritual enlightenment. The existence and nature of the secret chiefs have been a topic of much speculation and debate within occult circles adding to the mystique of the Golden Dawn and similar organizations. Uh, the idea of the secret chiefs predates the Golden Dawn and can be traced back to earlier mystical and esoteric traditions. 
These figures are often depicted as the custodians of hidden knowledge, imparting wisdom to select individuals who are deemed worthy. In the context of the Golden Dawn, the secret chiefs were presented as the ultimate authority figures who provided the founders with the knowledge necessary to establish and operate the order. The founders of the Golden Dawn, particularly Samuel Lydell McGregor Mathers, claimed that the rituals and teachings of the order were given to them by the secret chiefs. This claim served to legitimize the order's practices and hierarchical structure, as it suggested a direct link to a higher spiritual authority. The secret chiefs were believed to guide the development of the order, offering insights and directions through spiritual or tele telepathic communication. They were seen as protectors of the esoteric wisdom that the Golden Dawn sought to preserve and disseminate. Within the structure of the Golden Dawn, the secret chiefs were considered to be above the human leaders of the order. They were part of a hidden hierarchy that extended beyond the physical realm with influence over various esoteric traditions and societies. Um, I think we could probably speculate that they made up the Third Order itself. These were the leaders um, being spoken of within the Third Order. The true nature of the Secret Chiefs is deliberately ambiguous. Um, however, several theories exist regarding who or what they might be, beyond what I just speculated. Um, so, first of all, um, some mem members of the Golden Dawn and other esoteric traditions believe that the Secret Chiefs are non-corporeal entities existing on a higher spiritual plane. These beings are thought to possess immense wisdom and power, which they share with select initiates. Uh, another theory posits that the Secret Chiefs are highly advanced human adepts who have achieved a state of enlightenment or spiritual mastery. These individuals are believed to operate from hidden locations, maintaining anonymity while influencing the spiritual development of humanity. And some modern interpretations suggest that the secret chiefs are symbolic representations of inner spiritual archetypes or higher aspects of the self. Uh, in this view, the communication with the secret chiefs is seen as a form of inner dialogue or communion with one's higher consciousness. Um, personally, I think we could probably say that they are all of these things. Um, and if we can even have a look at different other traditions um, regarding things like the mastermen um, and, and such, such beings, um, which are said to be beyond human experience. Um, um, some also speculate that they are, are far advanced. They have, have, um, they have surpassed the need to come back to the earth, but they choose to in order to teach uh, people the ways of the occult. Um, just to carry on with the secret chiefs though, uh, within specifically the Golden Dawn, uh, several historical figures associated with the Golden Dawn claim to have had direct contact with the secret chiefs. Mathers, for example, asserted that he received instruction from these beings, which guided his leadership of the order. Mathers' wife, Moina Mathers, um, also reported experience of, of communication with the secret chiefs. And Alistair Crowley, a prominent member of the Golden Dawn, who later founded his own magical order, the AA or Argentium Astrum, as we mentioned last week or last month, sorry, um, also claimed to have interacted with the secret chiefs. Uh, Crowley's account of these interactions were complex and often intertwined with his broader spiritual and magical experiences. So the concept of the secret chiefs has had a lasting impact on uh, various occult traditions and organizations, as we can see. Uh, beyond the Golden Dawn, many modern esoteric societies, including some branches of Thelema and other hermetic groups, continue to invoke the idea of the secret chiefs as guiding figures. Uh, they act as spiritual authorities. The notion of the secret chiefs provides a sense of continuity and legitimacy to esoteric traditions. By claiming a connection to these exalted beings, orders can assert their spiritual authority and lineage. 
Um, they provide mystical inspiration. These secret chiefs serve as a source of mystical inspiration, representing the ultimate goal of spiritual development and enlightenment. Their guidance is seen as essential for those on the path of esoteric study and practice. And also over time, inter interpretations of the secret chiefs have evolved, reflecting changes in cultural and spiritual perspectives. Modern occultists may view the secret chiefs more metaphorically as symbols of inner wisdom and higher consciousness. So the Golden Dawn attracted, um, just go now going beyond the secret chiefs back into the actual Golden Dawn itself, um, that it, it attracted many notable members, uh, including famed poet W.B. Yeats, um, actress Florence Farr, and, as we know, occultist Aleister Crowley. Um, each brought their unique perspectives and skills to the order, further enriching its teachings. Crowley, in particular, played a controversial role. His eventual schism with the order led to the formation of his own magical society, which we have spoken about previously. Uh, the influence of the Golden Dawn extended far beyond its active years. Its teachings and Rituals have permeated various modern occult movements, including Wicca, Thelema, and contemporary ceremonial magic. Uh, I think when we actually say ceremonial magic, we, we kind of usually, um, or at least I do, referring to this as this, you know, the teachings and practices within the Golden Dawn itself. Uh, the emphasis on personal spiritual development and the use of symbolic rituals have become staples in many mystical traditions. By the early 20th century, internal conflicts, power struggles, and public scandals led to the decline of the Golden Dawn. Mathers and Crowley's disputes, in particular, uh, caused significant rifts. The original order dissolved around 1903, but its legacy lived on through splinter groups and the continued work of former members. In the latter half of the 20th century, there was a revival of interest in the Golden Dawn's teachings. Various groups claiming uh, descent from the original order began to emerge, uh, seeking to preserve the and continue its esoteric traditions. Today, several organizations around the world continue to practice and teach gold, the Golden Dawn system, um, adapting its rituals and teachings to contemporary contexts. So... Let's have a look at uh, what you can actually get your teeth in regarding reading material. Um, I think when it comes to the topic of, gold, of Golden Dawn and um, books that you can actually have a look at, there are really two authors that you need to focus on. That's Israel Regardi and uh, Chick Cic Cicero. Cic Cicero? Yes, it is. I'm sure it's pronounced Cicero. Um, and his his uh, his wife, I, think, I believe it's his wife. I can't be entirely 100% sure about that. But the books are usually by Chick Cicero and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Um, but anyway, let's have a look. Um, I will put a link to um, the Amazon store, the category for the Golden Dawn, on my Amazon storefront um, in the description and up top here. Should be up this corner. Should be that corner. Um, but uh, let's have a look. So I've split this into kind of different sections with two. Well, I think there's one book at the end, but two books in each section. So we start with the foundational text of the Golden Dawn. Um, we have the Golden Dawn, the original account of the teachings, rites, and ceremonies of, of the Hermetic Order by Israel Ragadi. Um, this is the most comprehensive and authoritative collection of the Golden Dawn rituals and teachings. Um, Regardi, a former member, compiled and published these materials to preserve the Order's knowledge for future generations. Uh, then we have The Essential Golden Dawn, an introdu introduction to high magic by Chick Cicero and Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Um, this book provides a clear and accessible introduction to the Golden Dawn system, written by two of its most prominent contemporary practitioners. Um, it covers the order's history, philosophy, and basic rituals. Then um, the next section is practical guides and ritual manuals. 
So we have self-initiation into the Golden Dawn tradition, a complete curriculum of study for both the solitary magician and the working magical group. Long subtitle. Um, this is by <laughs> Chick Cicero and again Sandra Tabitha Cicero. Um, this is actually a book I'm currently reading. I have not read this before. I didn't know about it. Um, it popped up when I was doing research for this and it's, you know, the, the authors, I know the authors, they are sound, they're great. So I do trust, um, this book. Um, so far, find it to be absolutely fascinating and brilliant. So, uh, definitely get it if you're interested. Um, but it is designed for those who sort of wish to study and practice Golden Dawn rituals independently. Uh, if you can't find an order or you don't want to join an order. Um, it offers a structured curriculum and detailed instructions for self-initiation. Uh, really, really good so far. Um, and then the Tree of Life, uh, an illustrated study in magic by Israel Regadi. While not exclusively um, about the Golden Dawn, this classic work by Regadi provides a deep dive into the Kabbalistic framework that underpins much of the order's teachings. Um, so, you know, we, we can look at this from the perspective of the Tree of Life and Kabbalah from the Kabbalistic perspective. But this, written by Regadi, you're going to get a, a more focused um, idea of the Kabbalistic system, the Tree of Life itself, of how it fits into the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. So it's probably better, if you're going to focus on that aspect of the Golden Dawn itself, probably better to, you know, start with this one and then expand your knowledge further with other content, other books. Then the next section, advanced studies and interpretations. Um, you know, you'll notice these are all all by Regardi or the Ciceros. Um, in fact, there are no books by anybody else in here. Um, I did read, when I was reading Self-Initiation into the Golden Dawn Tradition by the Ciceros, um, they do actually outline a couple books in there you might want to um, uh, you know, just get your hands on in the introduction itself. Um, so, you know, recommended by them, great source to go to. And have a look in the back of some of most of all, all of these books. Uh, you'll probably find a good bibliography or further reading section anyway. So, you know, you can extend your knowledge further from there. Right. So getting back to this, advanced studies and inter interpretations, the Golden Dawn um, System of Magic by Israel, Israel Regadi. Um, it's a comprehensive tome um, which covers advanced rituals, uh, magical theories, and practical exercises. It's an essential resource for the serious student who wishes to delve deeper into the Golden Dawn's esoteric practices themselves. And then the middle pillar, um, The Balance Between Mind and Magic by Regardie. Um This book explores the psychological and spiritual aspects of the Golden Dawn's practices, particularly the middle pillar exercise, which is a core component of the, the Order's rituals themselves. Um, and then supplementary texts and influences, um, Garden of Pomegranates by, you know, it's the Scrying on the Tree of Life by Regadi. I read this years ago. I was fascinated by it. Um, but this is another key text by Regadi. This uh, book focuses on the practical application of Kabbalistic principles within the Golden Dawn framework, again, um, and offering insights into mystical experiences and scrying techniques. I actually want to read that one again, um, specifically because that's the kind of work I am doing this year. Um, so that's going to be on my list for a reread. Uh, it was a very, very long time ago. Um, actually, just thinking about it, I think I remember um, I actually did a trip to um, the um, Walter Sisulu Botanical Gardens in, in uh, uh, what's the Rudapur area, Runakrans, I think it is. Um, it's I used to live quite close by uh, in my earlier, my teens and early 20s. Um, and I do remember um, I got the Regardis, The Golden Dawn. It's a thick book. I mean, this goes through. It's got all the initiation, initiation um, 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 ceremonies, um, you know, the, the, the rituals, the outlines, the, the actual scripts that are used. It's just packed, packed with information. And, you know, I was just really, really early on in my, my progress. Um, this was before I actually officially sat down for the first time and can label myself a working witch type of thing. So, 
like probably about five years, a bit longer before that. But I had this book and I, I do I have a clear image, clear memory of sitting on a bench in the, in the botanical gardens um, and uh, reading this book. And so, yes. And then I read the, the uh, Garden of Pomegranates. I think my daughter was probably uh, a, a baby, not even a toddler at the time. So that was 25 years ago, maybe. Um, so, yeah, definitely a long time. But uh, they've, you know, as with many of the contemporary uh, esoteric traditions that we have now, formed the cornerstone of my own practice. And I think the Golden Dawn um, and ceremonial magic in general, as I say, we, we say ceremonial, ceremonial magic, we instantly come to this idea of Golden Dawn. And I think this forms many, many, many people's practice. Um, it, it's got a foundation somewhere. Um, you know, I think everybody who continues on the path of witchcraft and magic, whatever path that is, um, for long enough, definitely explores this. Um, obviously could be wrong, but I can't imagine uh, somebody who has not explored the Golden Dawn, at least. Um, anyway, all right, so that's the Golden Dawn. As I said, if you do want to get hold of some of these books, um, I did have a couple more, but they were so expensive, I just I took them out of the further reading. They're either not accessible, you can't get hold of them, um, you can't even find online versions of them, um, but they were like $500 or something ridiculous, because they are out of print and now rare. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a pity, but uh, these books are fantastic. They are available. A couple of them are a bit more pricey, $50, $60, somewhere around there. Um, I know um, Self-Initiation into the Golden Dawn Tradition by the Ciceros. That's an expensive book. Um, in South Africa here, I can get it through our, our local online bookstore, but it's a thousand, uh, about a thousand two hundred rand or something like that. So it is an expensive book. It's double um, what the sort of average price for a, a non-fiction book is. Um, so, yeah, that one does get a bit pricey, $50, $60, somewhere around there. But, uh, yeah, uh, excellent books to get. And, I mean, when I say they're pricey, they're big books. They're not like, you know, the kind of thin books. These are big books, and they're packed. So, I mean, small text. Uh, <laughs> you have to really get your eyes on for these books. Um, they're just they're packed with so much information. It's amazing. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm going to leave now. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, or if there's a particular path or tradition you would like me to cover within this particular series, just uh, let me know. Okay. Have a good one, and cheers for now. Bye-bye.